Center of Trinidad and Tobago presents Light in the Word with Bishop Dr. Victor Gill. Amen. Bless the Lord. And we are happy to have our very own Reverend Tracy with us this morning. So let's put our hands together as we welcome her. This morning, I want us to turn to Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. My theme is boldness to hold on in faith. Hebrews 4.15, my second point. Jesus is touched with our infirmities. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Jesus can Feel what you feel. He can uh, sympathize with our weaknesses. Because he came to earth as a man. He came to earth as God incarnate in the flesh. He was fully man yet fully God. He was subjected to our every human limitation. He was tempted in the literal sense. He was persecuted. The Jewish leaders hated him with, vendor, with vengeance. He was subjected to difficult trials. He was poor, came from a poor community. When one of the disciples told Philip, come and see this Jesus of Nazareth, he said, could any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> the Messiah, Jesus, Jesus Christ, could any good thing come out of Nazareth? He was despised. He suffered physical pain. He endured the sorrow of lingering and cruel death. And one of the things I want to emphasize this morning is that Jesus Christ, as the great high priest, is able to identify with us. You see, because sometimes we come to God and if we are not reminded of these things, we find ourselves losing faith because of trials that comes our way and difficulties that comes our way. And some of us were born into situations we didn't ask for. But that is how it is. Jesus came as the horn child. He was the child when, jo when Mary told Joseph she was pregnant by the Holy Ghost, Joseph sought to put her away. Because, I mean, what you're talking about? We're going to get married, Mary, you cannot do this to me. And God intervened. And when he grew older, it was thrown back in his face. Because when he came on the scene as Christ, and he started to do his three-year ministry, the scribes and Pharisees were set for him. And when he began to do his miracles and workings, they said, wait. Isn't this not Jesus, Mary's son? 
Say, so, well, we are not born of fornication. So they threw it back in his face. And today some of us may have some things that are thrown back in our face. Because of the circumstances under which we came into the earth. And I'm here to announce to you that Jesus faced that too. He was poor. He came from a poor community. He didn't come from the upper class. He didn't come from Goodwood Park. He didn't come from Mocha. You know, say Mocha. Or Goodwood Park. Like some of us, and she not from Lavantel, Mova, Chenapu Village, Never Dirty, Beatum, Sealots, Behind the Bridge, Under the Bridge, Across the Bridge. infirmities he can identify with what it feels to be put what it feels like to be put down for in that he himself had suffered being tempted he is able to, to secure them that are tempted in other words because he faced temptation he could keep you even when you are facing temptation he was despised and he could keep you. Because sometimes I'm telling you, people come in church well dressed up. They look real nice, real put together. But some of the pain, emotional pain people are going through. Some of the things people are grappling with. They need to know that there is a Jesus. You know, because the world has this idea of Jesus, this impersonal Jesus. He's just up there on the throne with the angels. But the gospel of Jesus Christ brings Jesus personal. He comes down to where you are. He comes down to your situation. He identifies with you in that situation. And that is why the Bible says that we must hold the profession of it. Because one thing we are assured of, brothers and sisters, we are going to suffer in this life. One thing we are assured of, we are going to face it in this life. But the Bible says, whatever state you are, Jesus is there. He can identify. Hebrews 5, 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered prayers and supplication, with strong crying and tears. Yes, a big man. <laughs> Jesus noticed the weepers are big. Some of you men, you don't want to cry. You're too macho. So you're keeping it all inside. But the Bible said he suffered so much that he offered a praise and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience. Listen to this part. Yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all men that obey him. You know what the problem in the churches is? that we hear a gospel where we feel like once we call on the name of Jesus, once we call on God, rather, we're supposed to have no problem. As a, matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it is portrayed now. Once you sow a seed, you have a problem, sow a seed. And all your problems are gone. But there are things in this life that will bear upon us, that will cause us to cry and groan under the weight of the emotional pressure. And it told, it, the word of God is telling us that in this situation, this is where Jesus learned obedience. And brother, I'm here to announce that in your trial and in your testing, hold on bold fiercely in your faith. Obedience through your suffering. 
Now, it, it is all good and well to come in church. Everything going honky dory and nice. Your marriage smooth. You have real obedient children. You have money in the bank. You have no problem. You're in promotion. You have everything you want. Glory, hallelujah. Praise God. You're happy in church. But what when the, when the bottom falls out of the barrel? What when the man walk out and he tell you have another woman? He didn't want you again. Hey. What when that child watching your face? Who you love, you give your blood and your sweat for. And that child watching your face and they stand up to you and they tell you where to get off. Do you have the heart to come in church then and continue to serve God? Do you have the backbone to stand up and say in spite of hallelujah anyhow? You see, this is the area where Christians give up. Because they want to blame God. Because God you and see. God you and understand. Look at sister so and so. Look at brother so and so. Lord, like you forget me. You don't like me. And before you know it, the out of the church. The out of Christ, I should say. Because they're blaming everybody for their suffering. But the word of God told us at Jesus' greatest point of suffering, he learned obedience. Amen. Jesus can identify with how you are feeling. Jesus can even identify with the times when you feel you can't go on as a Christian anymore. Let's be real in here. You feel like you can't make it anymore. How much wars I will fight, Lord? How much battles I will fight, Lord? It seems like I come on a rapid fire. When one thing stops, something else starts in a different direction. But the Bible said when he was in Gethsemane, my God, and he was facing the most cruelest death known to man. My God, the Bible said he came to the Father and he said, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass. And some of us, we find in ourselves, ourselves in situations where we want to say, Lord, let this thing pass from me. Oh God, if it be your will, let the cup pass. But what took Jesus to the, nether, to the other level is when he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours. If I'm and I'm giving up with you and this is where as Christians we have to learn to hold on because I'm telling you I see people walk out of church somebody rub them the wrong way somebody say something they're wondering they, they feel well God I going through all this I so lonely Jesus knew why it is to feel lonely Jesus knew why it is to be betrayed but what the word of God is telling us here is to hold on is to hold on because Jesus went through and he held on so you can go through and you must hold on. Hallelujah. You must hold on. You must go through and hold on. Jesus was a perfect. He was sinless. And because he suffered, he was exalted. And he became the author of eternal salvation for all men. And there's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. There's no other name because Jesus suffered. And I want to say this morning, if you suffer for doing righteousness, for holding up, for uh, holding on to your faith. Because I'm telling you, you know why you go through as a Christian? You know why you suffer as a Christian? Because you cannot do like the world. You cannot act like the world. People in the world will cuss. They will sleep around. They will do all what they want to do. But when you decide to live for Jesus Christ, you have to conform to his image. And certain things, we have to make up our minds to go through. Because if we don't go through, it stands the reason that we will not meet our eternal destiny. We could lose our eternal destiny. And the enemy could take you down a rabbit hole. When he's finished, you do not know which way is up. So what is being said? 
priestly role. Because sometimes we tend to think nobody understands. You ever had that situation? Yeah, we all think nobody understands. Nobody understands. And so I want you to know there's somebody who understands. And that is Jesus Christ. And he alone qualifies to be our intercessor. Because he can pray us through. And you know people fall in sin. Hello, if you fall in sin, try the altar. Try the altar. Come back to Christ. He alone understands. He alone qualifies to be our intercessor. And we all need someone to identify with. We all need somebody to identify with us. You know, my brother passed about a month or so ago. And one of the things is that I have this button, the button that they gave us, you know, with his face, and I had it pinned up in the bedroom. And about two days yesterday, I think I was looking at it, and my eyes filled up with tears. And it filled up with tears with sadness and anger because I felt like, why you have to leave now? You know, I was like, you should have taken better care of yourself. I was like, this boy always doing something. He always coming with something, boy. And I was getting angry and grief. And when one of the things I always read in psychology is that one of the ways people internalize grief is through anger. They get vexed with the person for leaving, for dying. But that was me. And I only understood it when I, when I went through the emotion. Then I was like, oh, my God. I am angry with him. And so we could only understand certain things when we go through it. That is why when you have alcoholic anonymous and all these different groups, because people can identify with other people because you have been through that. But I'm here to announce that Jesus can identify with you. So you don't have to feel like nobody understands. Because Jesus understands. And he knows what it feels like even though you may be lonely. He knows you are lonely. He knows you are aching. He knows what you are feeling like. And I know the question that many of you are going to ask in your minds. And if it was a Bible study, you would have asked the question. So then what about those thoughts, Sister Tracy, that I don't want nobody to know that temptation. But it is not nice. Jesus knows, but the Bible says he was without sin. That means even though he felt the temptation, he did not sin. Because he was pure on that level. But he knew what it felt like. He knew the temptation. He knew the weakness. And so, he qualifies to be that high priest. You know, sometimes we look to people and think they would understand and they don't understand. You wish your husband would understand, he don't understand. Your wife would understand, she don't understand. The children don't understand. But there's one person who understands. And that is Jesus. And you can go to him. Now, Jesus is not this disgruntled high priest. Because in those days, the high priests carried themselves aloft. You know, they were better than the people. And the people should bow to them when they saw them in public, you know, and they should get this kind of reverence, which the people would give. And they were sort of like disconnected from the people, but Jesus is not disconnected from his people. Jesus is not like some God somewhere. Somebody was telling me uh, of a, a, Hindu, a Hindu ceremony where they prayed to the Hindu God and the Hindu God was to give them a certain... Uh, Something they provide a protection or whatever. They had to give the God offering. And because the offering wasn't done right, a spirit came and slapped up the woman in her face. Yeah, some, they said something held her by her hair, pulled her by her hair in the house, and began to slap her up in her face. And somebody was telling me also of an Orisha thing they were doing where they were cooking food. And they said, Tracy, this is real. I saw it with my own eyes. 
And because whatever they did was not right, when they went into the, to, the, to open the food, it was a pot of sand. But our God is not that kind of God. Our God walks with you even though you don't get it right. He helps you that you get it right. He works with you. He kneels with you. Our God is with you. There are things that you go through that you cannot tell people. But God knows it is ripping you apart on the inside. And sometimes we tend to feel alone and isolated. But the word of God said we have a high priest who has touched with all our hurts and weaknesses. There are areas in our lives that will trip us up. But he wants you to know that he is identifying with you. And if we understand this as believers, we would live half of the worries we carry on our shoulder. We will be able to lift it off and rest in the Lord. So we learn obedience through the things that we suffer. And we must understand that Christ knows how we feel. And be assured that Jesus Christ understands and is working on our behalf. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This morning, we are told to come boldly. And one of the things that the enemy does in the midst of the church is to press people away from the presence of God. Where you don't have that assurance that God is hearing you. Two things can cause that. Lack of faith or guilt. And none of them are good for us. Because the word says, come boldly. That word boldly means freedom, unreservedness and speech, open, frankly, without concealment, without the use of figures and comparisons, free and fearless confidence, cheerful courage, boldness, assurance. The Bible says, come boldly. How would you feel if your child is in serious trouble? And that child going to a neighbor or going to somebody and the child didn't come to you. And you have everything to help that child. Well, the word of God says, come boldly. And the reason being is that God knows we would face some things in this life. God knows there are situations that will come upon us to test us and to try us. And he says, come boldly. There are some things, brother, in plain talk. Some things when you hear about it, you get sick. Your belly hurt you. Your appetite cut. You get diarrhea. You can't remember which way is up. You just get confused. There are some things that drive you to the presence of God. And here now, when you reach there, you're not time for, oh God, you are the great God. You make the universe. You are the progenership and the regenesis and the genesis in the beginning. You're not time for all that. You lie in the presence of God and you say, oh God, I can't take no more. Oh God, I reach my breaking point. Father, if you don't help me here, Lord, I to that point. And so he says come boldly. He said don't shy away from me. He said come when you feel that way. Come. When you feel tempted come. Tell me the temptation. Tell me how you feel. Tell me how that making you feel. When you feel you had enough. Come and tell me how it feel. That's what the Lord is saying. He said come boldly. Come boldly. Certain things you can't say to people. Because they could misunderstand, but they could say it to God, though. And no matter if you say it, if you groan it, if you say one word, He knows. Because He is God. Hear the
to everyone. Prophet Dr. David Uwo and his team invites you to the great meeting June the 1st to the 3rd at the Central Bank Auditorium in Port of Spain, Trinidad, beginning at 6.30 p.m. Seats are limited. You can't afford to miss this, so I want to encourage you to register early to secure a seat. This promises to be a tremendous meeting. We have people coming from Jamaica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Grenada, even the U.S. of A. And as far as Australia, and not to mention Kenya, the calls are coming in, and we expect even more nations might come on board. I want to particularly invite all the pastors. We want to reserve seats for pastors who will call and register. So again, Prophet Dr. David Uwo invites you to this great upcoming meeting. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you at the Central Bank Auditorium, June the 1st to the 3rd. And the man of God will be in the house. God bless you. So much more could have been said today, but because of time, I had to stop there. I want to thank all of you that have tuned in from across the Caribbean. We have been receiving calls from across the Caribbean, from Jamaica, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and right here in Trinidad and Tobago. You have listened to this message today, and probably God has spoken to your heart. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. I also want you to know that there's a heaven and there's a hell. And the big question is, where would you spend eternity? If you're not saved, I want to pray for you. Say this prayer with me from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. I believe you died for me. You rose again from the dead. And today I invite you into my heart as my Savior and as my Lord. Thank you for hearing this prayer, for coming into my life and for saving my soul. Give me the strength to serve you until I see you face to face. Friend, if you, said I, if you said that prayer, I want you to know God heard you. The Bible says in Romans 10 and verse 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. What you need to do now is get into a good Bible-believing church where you can be nurtured in the Word of God and be prepared for water baptism. I also want to pray for those of you who need a miracle. Probably you are sick in your body. Jesus is still a miracle working God. He's still a healer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are sick in their bodies, that are listening across the islands of the Caribbean. I pray for miracles in the name of the, your holy child, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Amen. Probably you are facing a financial situation, a domestic situation, or you need a miracle for something that I may not be able to describe, but I want to set myself in agreement with you and we want to give God the opportunity for whatever it is. He's a miracle working God. He loves you and he will meet you at the point of your need according to your faith. So you can stretch forth your hands probably to the screen of the television as a point of contact and let us believe God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for miracles. Whatever people are believing you for across the Caribbean, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for divine intervention. We thank you for miracles. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I want to thank you for viewing light in the word you want to contact us you can call the number on the screen or you can contact me on facebook bishop victor gill and let us be friends keep you in mercy and truth television god bless you if you have a why to live you can endure almost any 